Welcome to Nation of Let's Play Farming Simulator 2013 on the Bayern Farm. All right, we got a couple things going on today. Uh, we are currently harvesting our wheat, as I showed you last episode. We got it ready to go, and I already started the harvester on here. And the reason why I chose wheat was because we actually needed some straw. Uh, let me just show you here. Do, 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 do. Oops. Uh, we actually do not have any straw at the moment. So in light of that, uh, I figured we should probably capitalize on growing some wheat and get some straw. And also uh, that'll help us with our mixing or getting our mixed rations as well because uh, we always need to make sure we keep those topped off. Now, if you notice, um, let me see if I can do it. There we go. That's a good way of saying it, seeing it. Uh, if you look at the at the animal hut right now, our pigs are at 100%, even though like everything is red basically. Um, <laughs> I tried to give them as much as I possibly could, and it says they won't accept any more. Probably more water, and that will be it, maybe. But uh, they only have one day's worth of stuff there, so it's a bit unfortunate. But just the way the hut works, I can't give them any more. Just the way the cat, uh, the pigs work, can't give them any more than they already have at the moment. So top them up and that's all I can do. Also do the same thing with the cows, top them up and they're good to go for the next six days or so. Uh, we have a hundred cows now as well. Uh, what if I can... Yeah, so this must be how much we're getting from the cows. Yep. Because that that's the only thing we have from yesterday and we didn't sell anything yesterday. Well, Thursday on this map at least. So... Yeah. We don't make that much money from our cows. <laughs> I think on other maps you make a lot more, but this one, not so much. Oh well. Anyways, we're harvesting some, a little bit of wheat here. We need to get this done so we can use the straw. I got the class Arion 640. He's over there in the corner waiting to be called to so he can unload the combine here. And he'll do that when he's ready. He's on course play at the moment. And also, at the moment, I have our Ford. He's currently cutting some hay for us because we need to get, uh, need to keep our supply of hay up because we need to make sure we can, you know, feed our cows and our pigs. Um, because we do, uh, we are getting up there a little bit in terms of how much, uh, how much, and how many animals, I should say, uh, we have. So. We are getting to that point, and I was thinking about uh, potentially upgrading to another uh, grass cutter, mower, um, moco, whatever you call it. Um, but I kind of realized we actually don't have a huge grass area to mow, and I don't know if it's even worth going to a bigger mower for this little area that we use at the moment. Now we, there is a bigger field out behind field 38 we could theoretically use for uh, grass as well but I don't know if it is worth it. Mixing plant one hay sallow empty. So yeah that's why we're doing a little bit of hay right now because I think we do have a bit of grass. Um, yeah so 44,000 liters of grass. A little bit of grass but not a crazy amount so uh, we are trying to stay ahead of the game instead of falling behind. And that's why we're cutting the grass at the moment. So he's almost done. He is, you know, halfway or so done. And then once he's done, I'll get him to put it all into a windrow, and then we'll go from there, basically. So probably collect it, uh, forge harvesting, I guess. That's what we'll do again. And yeah, that's probably what we'll do. Let's just take a little little bit of a peek at what we have in terms of things we may need. Because we're kind of uh, we're at a good point right now. We still need to get another field, uh, which we haven't gotten yet. But uh, we definitely can at some point in the near future. Uh, if we keep selling silage every now and then as a supplementary uh, way of getting money and also from the crops, we should be okay. Still not sure if this tractor is actually worth 18,000. I'm pretty sure it's not. I think it's worth a bit more than that, but it's an older tractor. It's only got 215 horsepower, so not that crazy. Anyways, a little bit of an aside there. Mm, no. 
don't have anything else. Hmm, we do have these, but these I don't like them because they're just not well done. They don't, doesn't, they don't appear to be, at least for my for my particular taste, let's say. I guess I'm picky, I don't know. Uh, nope, don't need a front loader or harvester. Uh, we could, we could upgrade, I suppose. But we don't have many upgrades to go to. Not at this point. Not not ones that are worth going to. Because like, cause we only have the one field, basically. And it's kind of not worth getting larger just with the one field. So we could upgrade our... to a different gravity wagon. But I don't think at this point it's even worth it. Because we only have the one field again. Cultivators, we don't need one. Plows, no. Cedars, no. Fertilizers, nope. Nope, nope. Uh, well, could get a manure spreader, but not really worth it either. Um, don't need any of this stuff. Um, always. Well, we could get this. This is uh, about forty grand or so, forty-four thousand for these two. But like I said, don't know if it's really worth it with what we have right now. Um, we're probably good for the time being in terms of what we have. Um, we are going to collect the straw, so we're going to need to use our class quantum rather than put it in the chaff. Um, we can use grass for that. We don't have uh, because well, we can use grass to make chaff if we need to. Let's just say that. Uh, baling technology. Don't think we're going to be baling this season, mainly because we have the facilities just to hold stuff. Yeah, I guess I think we're good for now. Um, this guy does need to be refueled. It's getting close. It's getting close to that point where you need to give him a little bit of extra fuel and... Well, hopefully he's a little bit of extra fuel, assuming we don't run out of gas or fuel right in the in the field here, so we'll see. Ah, there we go. Anyways, let's fire up our Kenworth here. I just noticed something that we need to take care of. Uh, I actually did take a look around after last episode to see if I could find where uh, where to pick up solid manure from uh, from the different places and there weren't any other places so I'll, it may be just the version I have and maybe you know versions after this one have it and it may work fine but this particular version doesn't I don't know um, it did seem like that was the case so all right, let's just refill this tanker. There we go. Now it's gonna take a little bit of a time. So this field right here is the field I'd like to get, but it's way too expensive. Five hundred thousand dollars for that field. Um, we're not getting that field anytime soon. Um, but maybe let's just take a little bit of a walk down to the end of the field here. It's um, not too bad. Um, we could actually collect the straw manually. That sounds like fun, right? <laughs> uh, I think I'll use Quirk Blade. <laughs> Not gonna lie to you here. Uh, like I said, we do have a big field in the back here uh, that we could use, and it's not actually a late identified field. So we could use this for grass if we need to supplement what we already have. But it is kind of hilly, and I don't know. I think right now I think we're okay with the field we have, although it is getting closer uh, in terms of how much we're able to, well, how many animals we're able to maintain with a small crop of uh, grass that we do have. But we could use this as well. And in that scenario, it would make sense to at least upgrade to a bigger butterfly mower. But that it's a longer way to go, obviously. Hmm. What other options are there? Um, I know... Where is it here? Uh, is this part of the... I think it's part of the regular mod. Uh, now that I think about it. Uh, I'm thinking about, where is it? This and this, but that's way more expensive than I want to pay. Wow. Totally forgot that was a $400,000. Uh, 
We don't make that much harvest or that much silage. Jeez, that's expensive. Yeah, that's not worth it for us. It'd be cheaper actually. It'd be cheaper for us just to do the extra little bit of hauling with our <laughs> with what we have. Uh, and this together would be a hundred thousand uh, dollars. Well, more than that, like hundred and twenty thousand dollars. Almost at least. So we do need to take a couple things into consideration. Now, the only reason we were considering sugar beets was because we do have this field over here. Uh, but we actually can't harvest sugar beets. Uh, we can't even plant sugar beets now that I think about it. Um, so that would be a bit of a downfall of this particular field. Um, hmm. So that's not really worth it either. Hmm. Kind of put ourselves in a bit of a predicament here. Uh, we could get one of these as well, but we don't. We're not hurting for liquid slurry at the moment, so I'm not going to worry about those. Uh, what are those? What is that, which is three hundred fifty thousand dollars. We don't need that. Actually, that's funny. That's a. Uh, that would be a cheaper option than getting the other one, just because. Uh, we could use our forge harvest that we already have. That's funny. Huh. Uh, nope, nope. Don't need any rakes. Don't need any of those. Nope, nope. Nope. I think we're good, actually. Yeah. Uh, maybe the next big thing will be upgrading the size of the equipment. Um, but I think our next big upgrade has to be uh, another field. Uh, because the progress we, we're making is a bit slow based on you know the fact that we have one field, basically. So... It's not helping us. And our next great demands for pigs, and that should be good because we got 300 pigs right now at the Vi Handler. Where the heck is that? I hope it's not down there somewhere. It looks like it may be there. Oh goodness, where is the Vi Handler? It's funny when you look at this map. It's like they actually do have the names on there, but you can't like zoom in or anything to see what the what they say. Uh, I don't see it. No. Well, we'll find out. We will find out when the uh, when it actually happens. Hmm. Yeah. We will see what happens in that situation. So he's almost done here. Uh, so we can't set the other guy to do course play quite yet um, to go on the field because we will need to wait until he's finished first done. Stop complaining. He's gonna stop and it won't be done. Just watch. He'll get to like one point and he'll be like, hey, you know what? Uh, we're almost done. And then he'll just go, oh, can't go any further. Need some more fuel. Jeez. I guarantee you that's what's gonna happen. So 18 liters. This guy, I think he can do he can go down to about 10 liters of fuel and then he'll stop, I think is what it is. Uh, and then he'll just be like, ah, I'm not working anymore. That's it. My hands are tied. He is doing a he's, he's overlapping a little bit, so. Mm. Something to think about. And the butterfly mower would be nice. It would eliminate a step. Um, that's good. You don't even get that anyways. Oops. Um, the butterfly more would eliminate a step because um, we wouldn't have to windrow it, but we'd still keep the windrower for the straw and whatnot. Because it does make it a bit quicker uh, being able to just say, "Hey, course play, you know what? Pick up the straw for us," because it's uh, it's not gonna <laughs> it's not gonna happen. It'll just take forever otherwise. All right, let's do a little bit of a whoops. That was supposed to be a earlier turn apparently, but I didn't make it there. Perfect. Let's back it up here. Nice. All right. Next, we need the windrower, which is right over here. Excellent. I do like this windrower. It's a really, really nice model. Um, good on NI modding for doing it because they did a fantastic job. Actually, when I originally thought, when I, when I originally saw it, I actually thought it uh, the tines came off and put it went up against uh, the frame there, but. In the end, obviously, they don't. And I need to fuel up. Because he's not going to be able to finish if I don't fuel him up. Alright, there we go. You're done too. And uh, let's give our 
pigs a little bit of water because they are running a bit low. It'd be nice if it changed it so they were being, you know, instead of it being all red, it would change colors, but I don't think it's going to, so. It's going to be one of those situations where it's like, yeah, not happening, buddy. It's going to stick like that until you sell some of the pigs. Uh, oh, there we go. Perfect. One thing I really, really like about this farm is the way the pigs load. Like, I remember when I first saw this farm and I was like, oh, what's this? And then it's like, oh, hey, that is so cool. And that was like the first thing that went through my head when I saw that. The fact that they have like this little loading ramp, that's so cool. And the fact they don't have to like back up into it, which is really nice as well, because backing up into uh, this little area would be just terrible. Just terrible. Oh my goodness, they're taking more? Yeesh. They use, they take up so much water. So much water. I hope they, I hope they stop. It's too bad that it actually cost us money in this map um, for the water. I don't think you can actually fill that one up um, from a pond or anything, but there aren't many ponds around here anyways, so. Oh my goodness, they're still taking more. Jeez. Alright. Well, they're not they're not stopping anytime soon, apparently. Good, he's done. Let's just drive through here then. And we need grass outline, grass will grow. There we go. Guess we can go this way. And let's just drive through the bushes here. It's an old tractor. We don't mind driving through the bushes every now and then. Actually, this is a... I really like this tractor now that I've used it a bit more. I like it actually better than the NI modding ones. And there's just one... Oops, one particular reason is just because it's not as loud. <laughs> um, and it's got four-wheel drive, four drive too, which is really nice. Oh, I did miss a lot. Oh, well. All right, we need to spread that out. Like so. And then you need to lower it, like so. And then set him on his way. Excellent. Whoops. Oh, I guess we did miss a lot. Wow. Oh, well. It's changed now. We can't do much about it. So we actually are in an area where they're still taking water. Holy crap. Oh, there it is. Whew. I was going to say. Oh, goodness. How much water are our cows at? Oh, they're at six days. They're good then. All right, so this is at 50%, so let's just, uh, let's put it where we usually put it, which is right over here. The one thing I really like about this tanker as well is that actually, the way it reacts, like, see how it doesn't like tip over right there? Like, let me sh demonstrate, uh, demonstrate what I'm talking about here. So let's just drop that off there. And if I were to take the same turn with this trailer right here you you'll see the difference in a second check this out so even that alone so let me just take a small little turn here see how it tips oh, apparently you can drive all through that well let's just drive through the rest of it ha go figure you can't drive through that fence <laughs> that's ridiculous <laughs> so as you can see it's a little bit tippy and I wish this trailer acted the same way as that water trailer, because that water trailer acts nicely. Uh, I believe that's a Duke modding one, actually, now that I think about it. And so is this truck. Go figure. Alright, what's the next thing on the list of things to do? Now, we're going to need to... Uh, let's just hook this guy up here. No. Oh, it's being weird, because... If you look where I am, this is the refuel point, so it's like, hey, do you want to refuel? And I'm like, no, I want to hook up to my trailer, and I can't because I'm right here at the refuel point. Erg. There we go. Uh, so what we're going to do is going to pull this trailer over here because we'll use this for the grass, and I have a feeling he's not going to be able to identify the Jason. No, didn't think so. All right. Always the same problem. It does work sometimes, but I don't know why, but for whatever reason, there must be a conflict with something else, or maybe on this map itself, but I can never, it doesn't work very often um, in terms of, hey, it recognizes the JCT 
forge combine harvester as a combine harvester. So I don't know. I don't know why it does that. I was reading an interesting article before I uh, started playing. Um, it was about pigs specifically and about biosecurity. Uh, so right now there's a bit of an, uh, not a, I wouldn't call it an outbreak, but there is a problem uh, with it, with pigs in, I think it's Western Ontario. Or is it Eastern Ontario? No, maybe it's not in Ontario at all. But the problem basically is it's, these uh, pigs have this disease basically uh, that some, uh, let's say, let me just clarify. This is not a huge problem. It's very, it's like one farm basically. And it was a very small farm apparently. So they ran into a problem where the pigs were getting ill. And it can cause you to lose piglets, basically, is what the problem uh, turned out to be in the end. Uh, and because of that, a lot of people are getting a little, well, farmers, hog farmers specifically, are getting really freaked out about it because um, apparently there's no, you, you, there's no insurance on your hogs. So if a hog dies because it gets this disease, it's basically just tough luck and you have to uh, just deal with it. So some farmers are going to like pretty extreme measures in order to protect their their pigs from the disease. So well, from, what, from what I read, it, they found, they discovered this disease or we're gonna call it this problem um, in a processing plant basically. And what happened was um, the truck went there, I guess caught caught the problem and then the truck goes to a farmer's a farmer's house and picks up some hogs there and transmits it to the rest of the herd. So because of that, one particular story they talked about was the fact that one farmer actually transported the hogs from his like main farm to like close to the road away from his farm and then transferred the hogs from his transport vehicle, which happened to be an old bus, which is kind of interesting, into the to the truck that was taking it to the market. So that just gives you an idea of how extreme some farmers how how extreme some farmers are getting in terms of you know protecting their investment really because you know um, a lot of people take things like you know our foods on our table we have no problems with it a lot of people take it for granted but you know the food needs to come from somewhere and somewhere you know someone makes a living off of you know putting food on your table so to speak which is a farmer and so basically if you know if his pigs or someone else's cows whatever it happens to be get sick or ill whatever um, it's basically just like you got to deal with it and you got to protect your well in this case protect your herd because if you don't well you're into a big problem like I know I talked to uh, a person I talked to somebody a while back about uh, ask I asked them why don't you open up your farm and uh, to the public and have like you know public visits around your farm and you can show them you know what uh, what's it like to have a farm and uh, educate people as in terms of where their food comes from and whatnot and um, the person actually said no and one of the main reasons why they said no was biosecurity because if someone comes in contact with something else and they come to their farm and they bring it to their farm then what can happen is you will you know your animals could theoretically die from someone else because they were some because they brought this disease or illness or whatever happens to be or virus onto your farm and then basically um, made your farm you know, not productive basically because the animals themselves are uh, getting ill and whatnot so people take when you have animals you gotta take it really really seriously so uh, biosecurity is a really important topic when you have animals on your farm so perfect he's done I'm actually gonna do a little bit of a clean up here because I have not done this I need to do it can I go faster than this oh I can good um, yeah so that's biosecurity so there some people are really concerned about uh, about this so it's really interesting to see what measures farmers are taking uh, to protect themselves from these types of problems, basically. So, like I said, some people are taking it the extreme of not uh, not allowing the truck that transports uh, hogs uh, to the processing plant 
and some people just choose not to have people on or choose not to open up their farms to the public because they don't want um, biosecurity issues which totally makes sense actually uh, because if you do have a biosecurity issue then the I don't know a lot of people get involved and it's not pretty that's what it boils down to so I'm sure it's the same like it really depends on the country and whatnot because I know some countries have very stringent rules when it comes to uh, security uh, not the security but the uh, making sure the food that we eat is safe basically food security I guess you'd call it so it's pretty in it's interesting to think about like that is a serious problem for some people but if you don't uh, if you're not a farmer ooh. If you're not a farmer, you may not consider that to be a, a, a serious problem, but might as well fill it up while it's here. Um, if you're not a farmer, you, you may not consider it a serious problem, but if you ask a farmer who has like cows or sheep or goats for that matter, um, they're going to tell you that making sure their herd of sheep or their herd or flock or whatever it happens to be is healthy is a very important thing to do. So. But it's uh, definitely interesting. Like, I know, like, in terms of some places, like, for example, if you have, uh, like, if you look up this map specifically, they have a place where pigs grow, uh, and that would be called a confinement building, basically. And um, if you, basically what it boils down to is a lot, some people don't agree with the way uh, those pigs are raised in that particular environment, but in order to put food on the table or to, what it really boils down to is in order to put enough food on the table uh, for people or to produce enough food for the way we live that's the way it's going to be uh, and the problem really well the, the problem is is that people aren't willing to pay a premium price uh, but they want you know things to be all hunky-dory on the farm and it's not always the case um, like confinement buildings are totally okay uh, for the most part like it actually saves piglets because what happens is uh, I think it's a sow will actually crush a piglet in some situations if they're not careful so that just gives you an idea um, of one particular situation where the confinement buildings are actually good now don't take my word as you know um, I'm a crazy expert or anything because uh, I'm not <laughs> not by any means um, but you know I've read and I've learned a few things so one of the things I definitely know is that people need to realize that um, it, uh, it's not all hunky-dory all the time <laughs> and uh, sometimes like in order to produce enough food for the world let's say uh, you need to uh, do certain things like for example uh, if we don't use um, some particular types of crops we're not going to be able to produce enough uh, of that crop so it's just not going to happen otherwise so for example if we can't if we if we uh, can't use pesticides or herbicides on a crop specifically then and we can't produce enough of that crop then well they're not going to get not going to be able to feed enough people sort of thing so it really boils down to those types of issues where oh come on really just turn right into me why don't you jeez um, so it really comes down to those ta that type of issue where if if we uh, if people keep wanting to eat and live the way they do then uh, I guess with the way I'm thinking it was like certain sacrifices kind of have to be made in terms of you know stuff like wow oh, he's going fast there we go that's a bit better so certain things need to be taken into consideration, like being able to spray your crops for certain pest with per certain pesticides and not hurt the crop. Because if you were to be 100% organic, then you wouldn't be able to spray any pesticides or any herbicides. But uh, if you're going for a strictly organic crop, people will have to pay a premium in order to get that, uh, because it takes a lot more extra effort in order to um, to produce that. So. I know one farmer, for example, he did the whole 100% and he actually stopped because he said, I needed to put food on my table for my family, basically, and then by doing organically, I he wasn't able to do it, basically. Um, so he stopped 
And it was as simple as that. Can I feed my family? No? Well then, I guess I can't do organic. And it was a very interesting um, point because it makes perfect sense. Like, if you can't feed your family because you're growing organic crops, well then obviously you need to make a change. Um, so. Anyways, that's my rant about organic stuff. Actually, uh, no it's not. <laughs> I have something else to add now, apparently. Um, there was actually an, uh, a pair, I, didn't, I didn't see it, but there was a article of some sort that was released uh, by CBC, which is the one of the main broadcasting companies um, in Canada. And they were they released a study or something that showed 8%, I think it was like 18% or 8%, I can't remember the number. Let's just say it's 8% of organic farmers had like residue of pesticides and whatnot, so. And in that situation, what happens is it kind of uh, puts all organic farmers in a bad, <clears throat> or presents them all in a bad way, which is just not the case. Um, obviously some organic farmers, you know, trying to get away with a bit more than others, and some other ones don't uh, do it all by hand sort of thing, so. Anyways. It was just an interesting or interesting little thing they talked about, because they were saying, you know, <laughs> not everybody's following the rules is what it kind of boiled down to. So, it goes back to my previous statement, is sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. And if that's, uh, not doing organic, then it's not doing organic. It's interesting. There's a place close to my uh, in-laws farm, and uh, I guess it's this couple. I'm not sure if it's a couple or not. It's hard to tell. You just kind of, we kind of drive by it every now and then when we're working on the farm there, and you'll see them out in the field. And the interesting thing is, is that they will hand pick weeds out of a field. Like it's not a very large field, don't get me wrong, but they'll go and hand pick um, weeds from a field because they are I think I think they're an organic farm, so if you can uh, have the manpower in order to do something like that, then that's great, but not everybody can do that because it is expensive basically. Like for example, in Canada or Ontario I'll say um, the minimum wage here is 10.25 right now. Uh, 10.25 an hour. So if you hire somebody for 10.25 an hour uh, to pick weeds from a field, for example, um, they could spend probably the whole day out there. Let's just assume it's a 10-hour day. So you're gonna pay somebody $100 a day to pick weeds in a field, and they could probably do that every day of the week. So that's $700 a week just for you know to make sure the crop doesn't have any weeds in it which sounds ridiculous but you know some people go to those lengths um, maybe not for getting people to pick weeds manually but for some other stuff I don't know like with a market garden for example you know trying to make sure that's all, all organic is equally difficult because weeds just love to get up all in uh, or in, a, in organic gardens uh, grill so to speak so just the way it is. Oh, come on. Really? Am I not close enough? Pish posh. I'm close enough. There we go. There we go. This is funny because this is just the, the course play route, so I can't do anything about it. So basically, I have to follow this guy along because he won't move anywhere unless this guy's here. Just because of course play, basically. And he's going kind of fast, actually. What's he set to, I wonder? He's set to 14 miles an hour. How much is 14? That's probably a little bit too fast. That's still a little too fast, apparently. Oh, this is the turn. This is the hardest part about this little course I made. He's trying to follow along with this little guy here when he does the turns because he turns into you as opposed to away from you. Uh, I could go on the other side, but it doesn't always work properly on the other side for whatever reason. I don't know why, but it doesn't always work the way I'd like it to. Perfect. 
Look at this. Almost done. Almost done. <clears throat> Got 300 pigs now. So when that great demand for those pigs comes up, that's going to be awesome because we're going to have uh, probably around four, 450, maybe 500 pigs, maybe something like that. Something in that area. So, and we get 20,000 a crack regularly. So it'll be interesting to see uh, uh, to see how much we get. Because if it's a double, it'll be 400 a pig. If it's 1.8, it'll be 370 or something like that. I don't know. Regardless, it is going to be awesome when we get we get around to selling those pigs. Although I'm kind of curious where there actually is a where's the place we need to sell them. Really, come on. Jeez. I don't know why it likes doing that. This is why it's nice to have the truck and the combine set for course play because then you can just you know let it do its thing, basically. And uh, how much grass do we have? Let's just double check that. Uh, 90, yeah, okay, so what we'll do is we'll put this in the silage bunker here because we need to have that because we need the silage and while it's doing that, let's check on the combine. Oh, he's almost done, perfect. Why did he miss a whole strip there? What's up with that? Maybe it wasn't ready yet? That's strange. We're gonna have to make sure he gets that. That's a pretty big strip, jeez. What happened there? It must, the only thing I think of is that it wasn't ready to be harvested, this little strip. Uh, let's just check. Uh, I don't know. That's strange. Unless the, tra maybe the tractor got in front of it or something, or, wow, it's like a whole big long strip, wow. How the heck did it skip this? Like really? Like this makes no sense. What the heck? That is really strange. Did he just do a little? Oh, you know what? That's probably because this right here. That's why. Okay, that makes more sense. But still, <laughs> that's so strange. Yeah, that's what I. That's because I probably had the speed set a little bit too quick. It wasn't. It was like a. I think it was like fourteen or fifty miles an hour, or something like that. And that's probably why there's that little gap right there. Oh, that's funny. Oh, not the combine, I mean the cedar. Alright, so that's 47,000 liters, so let's go finish off the rest of this. I think we will get another 10 or 20,000-ish from this. Probably not a crazy amount. And we could, make, we could make some of the straw into silage as well, if we needed to, but I think we'll be good. I think we will be good. And I'm after this I'm kind of considering whether I need to uh, whether I need to actually make use that other field in the back there for uh, silage or not. Because um, we actually go through a silage pretty quickly actually. Um, but not the grass. The grass is pretty good because we have like like I said we got 91,000 liters so grass is okay but silage we kind of blow through a lot quicker. So we may need to consider expanding our silage operation a wee bit. There we go. Perfect. Alright, so he is done. And what I can do is I'll line up the truck here uh, for the wheat. And we can sell that next episode. Because I don't think there's any great demands coming for wheat, is there? No. We're good. All right, let's line it up here, and we shall leave it here for next time. Perfect. He's almost done. That guy's going to get in the way. Yes, he is. All right, well, get in the way then. And that's full. I'm going to set this guy on this little strip here so I don't forget about it. I don't mind leaving this little strip, but that that's a pretty big little strip. So I'll make sure he gets that right now. Because that would be a little annoying if he missed all of that. I hate to think what would happen if I actually started <laughs> seeding the field and I realized that I missed a huge chunk. Yeah, so this right here is like the perfect size. So this, see this? This is why it didn't go any further. It's like, oh, look, I can't go any further. 
Silly Conway. Anyways, I'll finish the episode there for now, folks. What I'll do off camera is I'll seed this field and I will collect the straw off camera as well. And then what I'll do is we'll come back when it's the great demand for the pigs and we'll sell some pigs and we will sell some wheat probably next episode as well. All right, my name is Ian Robson. and this has been Farming Simulator 2013. Talking about organic farming today, apparently. Catch you guys later.